y'all and thank y'all for tuning on in again. Now, if this is your first time tuning in, welcome and we appreciate you for doing so. We are gonna be going over some ribeye steaks right about now. First thing is first, make sure you got that butter in the pan and it's sizzling. It's got to sizzle, ain't nothing like that sound. The first thing we did though, is make sure we seasoned up one side. The side that you see is seasoned. The side that's down being seared is unseasoned. We have three ribeye steaks that we working with and these steaks sat on the counter for about 45 minutes. Now, just in case you're wondering why I only seasoned one side of the steak is because I did not want the seasonings to stick to the pan and it's a dual cooking method process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these steaks out after they seared on this one side and we're going to put them on this grate right here. And then we're going to season the other side that did not get seasoned, even though that looks like it's seasoned. It ain't seasoned. That's that cast iron working. Kinder's buttery steakhouse season. Kinder's wood fire garlic season. We also use beef base on that steak too as well. We just want to let you know, I did not use any salt. I've been working on that. Beef base carries a lot of salt, so you have to be cautious. And a lot of our seasonings that we use have a lot of salt. That is one of the main ingredients, so we have to watch out for our sodium intake, all right? I know we love salt, but uh, we got to watch that, okay? I want you here. So we slice up these bell peppers, and make sure you hold a knife. You hold the knife the right way. The knife, it really has to be held the right way, okay? All right? Now, when you hold a knife, make sure you are using your index finger right here and your thumb right there. You are tucking your thumb on the opposite hand with the rest of your fingers. You need those fingers. Yes, you do. You really need them. As many times as I've been cut in the kitchen, I am a chef. Been one for 20 plus years now. I'm showing this onion being peeled right here for a specific reason. Because y'all know red onions can be difficult. So uh, don't use a knife like I did. Use a spoon. And that way it'll pop right off for you, okay? Now let's get back to slicing these onions up pretty thin. All right, now it looks like we may have found the size that we're looking for. We wanted them pretty thin, bell peppers, julienne pretty thin too as well. Now, these are garlic cloves and these garlic cloves are growing from our family garden. So I do take pride in these garlic cloves. So I just want to show you, you can grow your own vegetables, your own tubers. You know, I grow green onions too as well onions red onions sweet potatoes so i've been working on my own personal garden now so we we're going to slice up this garlic too as well we're going to sit this garlic to the side the garlic that i just sliced it's not in that right there it's not in that veggie mix now in that veggie mix it's the bell peppers remember it's the onions remember now in this pan it's just the onions i want to get the onions going first but we do have bell peppers and there they go we're gonna drop them bell peppers in there too and get those bell peppers working now this is on high heat. I did add a little bit of butter into the pan. Now this is the same pan that I cooked the steaks in. So when I added the butter into the pan, I also, as it cooked, I added some water in there too as well to go ahead and get all of that off the bottom of the pan. I wanted everything, everything. So go ahead and add seasonings into that too as well. Add some beef base into that too as well. Notice you have not seen me put up any salt the reason i have not put up salt is because i'm not using salt beef base again has a nice amount of salt the seasonings that we use to flavor our food up the seasonings that we use to flavor our food carry a lot of salt now i'm adding the garlic into that fresh garlic that i'm so proud of from the family garden we're going to add that in there too season up that now we have mushrooms we have bell peppers we have onion, we have garlic, come on now. That alone can be a vegan dish by itself, all right? So to all my vegan people out there, people who are fixing meals for vegetarians or vegans, don't add the beef base though, okay? Don't add the beef base if it's for a vegan or vegetarian, they can have a little beef base, all right? 
So just think about this. This can be a side dish for someone who is looking to eat healthier. That by itself, right? Serve it with some kale, serve it with some mashed potatoes. Boom. There you go. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, steak, 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 steak. Okay, here go our steaks, y'all. We pulling out these ribeyes. Mm, mm, mm. Now, these ribeyes, how long did I let them cook in the oven, y'all? I let these ribeyes cook in the oven for about 12 minutes. I already had the oven pumping at 350 degrees convection. All right, so that's about 375 degrees. And I let the steak stay in there for about 12 minutes. The steaks came out to a medium temperature that's what i was looking for all right so now we got to go ahead and get the steak sliced up so you can kind of see what i'm talking about take a look at that steak you just cooked you pan seared and you oven finish because you oven finished that steak that gave you time to take care of other tasks around the house i have a fully disabled son that can't walk talk sit stand or crawl so guess what y'all i'm throwing that steak in the oven and i'm checking on him look at that steak y'all Look at that steak, y'all. Y'all cooked that steak. That's what that's about, all right? So we're able to take care of multiple things when we do a dual cooking method. We pan seared it real quick, and we let the oven do the job for us, right? And we're going to go ahead and top this off, right? Top the steak. Oh, they go the mashed potatoes. I didn't even talk about the mashed potatoes that we made. They was fire. Some golden Yukon mashed potatoes on top of that. Yeah, you got to have some good buttery mashed potatoes. I minced up some of the garlic and added that garlic into the mashed potatoes too as well. Thank y'all for watching again. And y'all, please be sure to subscribe. I'm going to come with more positive and fruitful content. Amen.